While geography is used for physical and political maps, it can also be used for other purposes such as mapping out time. One day on Earth is technically 23 hours and 56 minutes long, but for practical purposes we round that up to 24 hours. It makes it convenient when setting business hours or clocks to have an even number like that. For mapping out what time it is in what place, we divide up the planet into time zones that dictate what the official time in an area is supposed to be. There are regular and irregular time zones. Regular time zones are supposed to be an hour away from the next, while irregular time zones could be 30 or 15 minutes away from the next time zone instead. You can find irregular time zones in places like Newfoundland, Iran, Afghanistan, India, or Nepal. But if each regular time zone is just an hour away from another, that should mean there are 24 standard time zones, one for each hour. But time is an artificial measurement, and sometimes we bend it to our convenience. Thanks to the Pacific nation of Kiribati, we actually have 26 standard time zones instead of 24. Yes, in effect we added two extra imaginary hours of a day. Where did the idea of those two extra time zones come from, and exactly why did we decide to add them? The short answer, convenience and money. No surprise there. But the full answer is an interesting mix of history, geography, politics, and business, all of which led to the island chain nation of Kiribati to extend permanently into the future. Technically, at least. I know that still doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so I'll just have to explain the history of time zones and how the nature of how they work led to Kiribati basically use a loophole to defy time. But first, I'm going to talk about this video sponsor, Blinkist. Blinkist helps you understand important and cool stuff from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts in 27 different subjects in digestible 15-minute blinks. In a way, you're not just being summarized information, you're also learning more and being entertained at the same time. You can even download their stuff to listen to on the go. Blinkist also offers a service called Blinkist Spaces, which lets you make a space for your family and friends to access your recommendations even without a subscription. With Memorial Day coming up, I ended up listening to a blink on the book Hue 1968 by Mark Bowden, about a turning point in the war in Vietnam. This led to exploring other titles like Tribe on Homecoming and Belonging by Sebastian Junger, which is a thought-provoking blink about the human need for community and belonging, an often overlooked aspect of veteran life when they return home. Blinkist for Memorial Day is now providing a deal in which you can get a 7-day free trial for Blinkist along with 50% off Blinkist annual premium using the promo link in the description below. This offer is only valid until May 29th, 2023, so be sure to take advantage of this promo while you can. You can't go wrong with learning more each day. So once again, use the promo link to get Blinkist below, and thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. So as mentioned, Kiribati is an island chain nation in the Pacific Ocean that is always in the future. At least two-thirds of it. So let's look at how they managed to give the world 26 time zones instead of 24. Countries have had ways to tell the time for a long time, usually using the position of the sun in the sky or the shadows it casted like with sundials. But the idea of having an entire country or region follow a standardized time is relatively modern. At first, railroad companies in the late 19th century began using standardized time as they relied on getting to places efficiently and on time. Their travels spanned large enough distances to where times for sunrise, noon, and sunset would be different from place to place. With many western nations now having global colonial empires and global trade, it eventually became apparent that standardized time zones were a great idea for economic efficiency. For a while, you had a debate on whose time to base the world on, with London and Paris competing on being the central time. The standard that ended up winning, though, was Greenwich Mean Time. The British Empire had the island of Great Britain adopt GMT while every other colony was an offset from it, meaning a rough number of hours off of whatever time it was on Great Britain. Having so many colonies around the world kind of made it easier for other countries to also have offsets from Greenwich Mean Time. So instead of saying, oh, this city is 47.5 minutes away, you could just say, eh, it, it, time zone, it's an hour away. That's easier to remember. In 1884, there was an international meridian conference in which 26 nations agreed to adopt Greenwich Mean Time as an international standard. 
While it would take decades for other countries to adopt time zones, there was a standard to adhere to. But where do hours 25 and 26 come in? The important detail of GMT is that the time zones are based off of offsets, their distance from the original time in Britain, not their position on the planet relative to the sun. That means even if the sun hits your place as the same time as somewhere else, you could have a time zone that sets the time differently than the other place by saying you adopt a 10 hour offset instead of a 9 hour offset like your neighbor does. This results in a time zone map looking like this, with many zigzags and irregular shapes for time zones. There are many reasons on why you would do this, and it usually results from more efficiency. Remember how time zones were first used by railroads for efficiency across large spans of land? Well, countries can have large spans of land too, but borders aren't going to be along time zone boundaries perfectly. Why should one random town be forced to be an hour ahead or behind just because it's a mile past the time zone boundary? That could be bad for business as it limits how much time trade can happen. Or imagine having to annoyingly change times all the time going from one town to another. So this can result in some weird time zones like all of China being on the same time zone, or alternatively you can have situations like Texas where El Paso is on mountain time instead of central time because it does way more daily interaction with New Mexico than the rest of Texas due to a lot of empty space between them and the east. So at times there were reasons to create time zones that were 13 hours away from Britain instead of 12. If the center time zone was based on the prime meridian going through Greenwich, then it meant the edges met in the Pacific at a line called the International Dateline. This meant going across this line in a westward direction meant going into the next day. Like mentioned before, if one hour could potentially make businesses between different nearby places awkward, imagine a day's difference. This was first a case in the Soviet Union, where their easternmost point in Siberia should have been across the International Dateline and therefore be 11 hours behind London instead of ahead, but they decided to make it 13 hours ahead of London for efficiency. The British colony in Tonga also did the same thing by adopting a 13 offset from their negative 11 offset. It was more economically efficient since they did a lot of trade with their neighbor islands across the Dateline. Looking at a map of Kiribati, you can see the International Dateline wraps around them which means you can infer it would normally have gone through them. During colonial times, Kiribati was actually multiple different colonies. You had the Gilbert and Ellis Islands, owned by the British, the Phoenix Islands, which were jointly occupied by the British and Americans, and then you had the Line Islands in the east, which were a mix of different British and American island colonies. The Gilbert and Ellis Islands were west of the Dateline at the time, and the Phoenix and Line Islands were east of it. And with them not being the same territory, it didn't really matter. However, with decolonization during the Cold War, there was interest in all of these islands becoming the same country due to a similar Polynesian culture between them. The British and Americans agreed to give independence to all three island chains under a single nation named Kiribati in 1979. For 15 years, the time zones were the same as in colonial times. But it became quickly apparent that having two-thirds of your country on a different day is not the best for their economy locally or internationally. So in 1994, they decided to change the time zones for the Phoenix and Line Islands. But having them be on the plus 13 time zone would still create problems due to the huge distance between each other. So they decided to create a brand new, the first and only, plus 14 offset. This means that from a time zone perspective, the Line Islands would be the first place in the world to experience the next day. Even though they're on the same longitude as the US state of Hawaii, they start Monday the same time Hawaii starts Sunday. Therefore, they are always technically in the future. This has also led to minor tourism boosts around New Year's because it meant the Line Islands would be the first place on the planet to celebrate the New Year. Since they changed their time in 1994, it also meant that they had a lot of people visit for the special turning of the millennium as well. They even changed the name of their island Carolyn Island to Millennium Island to mark the occasion. Beautiful island, tropical drinks, and the bragging rights of I got to celebrate the new millennium first. Considering how important tourism is to a small island nation like this, it was certainly a smart business move as well as a smart political move. So with all that, now you know why Kiribati defies time and why we have 26 standard time zones instead of 24. I'm Emperor Tigerstar and I'll see you guys next time, into the future.